Today's topic, how to find a boyfriend. Today I want to share very practical tips with you that you can use to find a boyfriend. But you don't just want to find any boyfriend. I mean, do you want to find an abusive boyfriend? Do you want to find a toxic boyfriend? Do you want to find a narcissistic boyfriend? Most likely not. You want to find a boyfriend who's loving, who's caring, who gives you the love that you deserve and who's there for you when you need him, who supports you and who's just an amazing partner. And that's why it's so important that before you even go out there, before you go to the first party, you write down the qualities of your dream boyfriend. And yes, physical attraction is an important factor. I don't want you to date a man who you are not attracted to, but I want you to realize that when it comes to a long-term relationship, other factors such as his level of empathy, his qualities, his values are way more important. I mean, I've coached women in Skype coaching sessions who admitted to me that the only reason why they started a relationship with a guy that then ended in a complete train wreck was because they were physically attracted to him and drawn towards him. And this can be enough for, let's say, a short-term relationship, but for a long-term monogamous relationship and maybe even for a life partnership, other things are way more important. And the same is true for me, for example. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very attracted to my girlfriend. She's an incredibly beautiful woman. But her values, the qualities that define her as a human being, her personality, are way more important when it comes to the big picture. And that's why I invite you to see the big picture and to write down the values and the qualities that you want your dream boyfriend to have. Because only when you know who you want to attract will you be able to attract this person. So you can, for example, write down that you want a man who's honest. You want a man who shows his authentic self. Maybe you also want a boyfriend who's emotionally vulnerable and who's open with his emotions, who doesn't suppress his emotions. And maybe you also want, or I guess you also want a boyfriend who's faithful, who's loyal. Write down all these qualities and then you know who you want to attract. And that's the list you should have in your mind whenever you meet a man and whenever you're on a date with a man. And then say yes to invitations and events. Whenever a friend of yours invites you to a party, say yes. Whenever there's a meetup in your city that you're interested in, say yes. And you can, for example, look for meetups on meetup.com and then choose the meetup that you enjoy the most. And then when you enjoy this meetup, or let's say when it's a topic that interests you, then it's much more likely that you will meet a man who has the same hobbies and the same passion as you. The more you go out and the more you put yourself out there, the more you go to parties and events and social gatherings, the more chances you will have to meet the right man. Because sometimes you have to meet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men. And then after one date, you will decide, ah, oh, this guy is not the right guy for me. Then with another guy, maybe after the second date, you will say, ah, oh, he's not for me. And then at some point you will meet the right man. You need to take action. And you should also ask potential boyfriends about their goals and dreams for the future. And there are two reasons why this is so effective in finding the right boyfriend. The first reason is because by doing that, you set yourself apart from all the other women. You do something that most women don't do. A lot of people, especially when it comes to the first interaction or then also the first date, they have a lot of small talk and they talk about things like the weather and how oh, the city is nice and have you seen this movie and that's all fine and dandy, but it doesn't allow you to connect with a man on a really deep emotional level. But if you ask a potential boyfriend about his goals and dreams for the future, then he will feel appreciated. Then he will get the feeling that you really care about him, about his future, and thereby also about the future that you might want to create with him. And the second reason why this is so effective is because you want to date an ambitious man. I guess you want to date an ambitious man. You don't want to date some loser. You don't want to date some lazy guy who's just watching TV all day. You want to date an ambitious man who's successful, or if he's on the younger side, then who has the potential to become successful. And by asking your potential boyfriend about his goals and dreams, you will find out if he actually has goals and if he has dreams and if he's actively pursuing them. So you can set yourself apart from other women and at the same time, you can also find out if this is actually the kind of guy that you want to date. And then you can use the devotion sequence early on in their interaction. 
you can actually use this technique while you're enjoying your first conversation with this man. And you can also use it, of course, on the first date. And when it comes to devotion, devotion can actually be an emotion that's stronger than love. And if you want to find out how you can make the man of your dreams, the man who will then become your boyfriend, devoted to you, then you can click on the first link in the description and watch this video till the very end. You can also go directly to gethimkeephim.com slash devoted and then watch this video. And don't be afraid to ask in your social circle if there are men who are single. Just don't be afraid to ask, it's all good. You don't have to be ashamed for asking your friends, hey, do you know somebody who maybe knows somebody? That's great, a lot of people meet like that. For some reason, there's this stigma when it comes to asking friends about other single people in their social circle, but I think there shouldn't be a stigma at all. It's totally okay to ask friends if they know a guy. And it's actually better than meeting guys randomly, because your best friends probably know what kind of man you are attracted to and what kind of man you are looking for. And if she knows a man who's single in her social circle who fits exactly the criteria that you want in a potential boyfriend, then it can be a match made in heaven. And then, of course, you can also use the devotion sequence on this man to make him devoted to you. And I always give my Skype coaching clients the advice to avoid clubs and to avoid Tinder when it comes to finding a partner, when it comes to finding a man for a long-term relationship. Most men on Tinder, not all, but most, and most men in clubs are not there to find a girlfriend. That's just how it is. That's the reality that we're dealing with. Tinder was designed as a hookup app. The club is designed as a venue where you can hook up with people. Yes, there are exceptions. You might be one of the lucky women who find their life partner in a club or on Tinder. But the chances that you will meet this kind of guy, that you will meet your future boyfriend somewhere else, are way higher. So when it comes to dates with guys that you met on Tinder or in clubs... I want you to always keep your ears and your eyes wide open because most of them are not boyfriend material. And don't rush things when you are looking for a boyfriend. I mean, it's totally up to you how fast and how far you want to take things when it comes to the relationship with this guy or the potential relationship. But if you want to separate the man who are just looking for the one thing, and I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, from the man who are actually looking for a long-term relationship, then it's advisable that you make him wait a little bit. For example, my girlfriend didn't even kiss me before the second or third date, if I remember it correctly, and nothing serious happened before the fifth date. And that's how she made sure that I'm actually in it for the long term, that I'm committed to this relationship, and that I don't just look for a quick hookup. So from her perspective, it was quite a smart move, because then she knew, okay, even though I didn't kiss this guy on the first date and on the second date, he still wants to see me again. This man is interested in me. And you can use the same strategy that my girlfriend used to win me over. And your body language is important. When it comes to finding a boyfriend, it's easier for you to attract men and to attract potential boyfriends if you have a relaxed body language, an open body language, and if you move in a confident but slow way. Because this screams, I'm approachable, I'm in a positive mood, I'm relaxed, you can approach me. And then more potential boyfriends will approach you. And that's something that I also work on with my Skype coaching clients, with my coaching clients in Skype coaching sessions. And if you want to work on something with me, if you want to share your story with me, your struggle, the things that you're dealing with right now, and you want me to give you advice that's specifically tailored to your situation, then you can click on the second link in the description or go directly to gethimkeephim.com slash Skype. And you can look out for red flags early on. In fact, you should look out for red flags early on. Remember what I said in the beginning of this episode, you don't want to date a narcissist, you don't want to have an abusive boyfriend, you want to have an amazing, loving and caring boyfriend. And that's why it's important that you look out for red flags. For example, if he only talks about himself, but he doesn't reveal any attempt of wanting to get to know you, this can mean that he's only looking for a hookup. Or if he's, for example, rude to the waitress or the waiter, this is already a red flag. Or if he disrespects your boundaries, that's also a clear red flag. So look out for these red flags so that you make sure that you say no to the wrong boyfriend and yes to the right boyfriend. 
And that's why I give you the last piece of advice in this episode, fire fast and promote slowly. Here's what I mean by that. You can hire quickly, and by hiring I mean you get his phone number, you go on a date with him. You can simply get to know him, but then when you see any, or especially when you see many red flags, then fire him fast. Fire fast and then promote slowly. If you, for example, meet a guy who fits all the criteria, then don't rush things. Take your time, get to know him and allow him to get to know you and then promote him to boyfriend after you gave yourself the time to get to know him and once you're sure that this is the man that you want to have a relationship with. And that's how you can find the right boyfriend. And if you want to make the right boyfriend devoted to you, then you can click on the first link in the description or go directly to gethimkeephim.com slash devoted. And if you enjoyed watching this video, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Share your opinion, share your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. And I would love it even more if you would hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video.